Welcome to Tying Michigan's Best Trout Flies. Uh, today we're going to be doing an old uh, nymph pattern of mine. It a, was a favorite of mine for years and it's actually technically not my pattern. Uh, the original that I varied considerably uh, came out in uh, Fly Fisherman Magazine back in the 70s and it went by the name then of the mink thing. I changed it around with different materials and so on and so forth a little bit different construction, and it became a favorite of mine for years. I call it the squirrel rat nymph. So let's get started on that. So we're gonna get started now on tying my squirrel rat nymph. Now, it's so named because of the materials that go into making the body. Uh, what I've done here is I'm using a size 10 wet fly hook. I like it uh, on tens and eights, personally. It can be made smaller or even bigger if you like. And I've, I've got a, a appropriate size bead on here. And then behind that bead, I've got about a half a dozen wraps of uh, uh, probably uh, uh, 20 hundredths uh, lead wire added, added weight. Now, Obviously, you don't have to put weight on it to, uh, or lighter weight or, or more weight. Uh, tungsten beads would probably be all you need for, for, to equal this much weight, but uh, I, I don't, have never bought a tungsten bead. I can't stand the price of them, quite frankly. So I just use a little, the old fashioned way, a little bit extra lead on there. Uh, and uh, uh, the best thing to do with these is have some perhaps just with a bead for a relatively lightweighted fly and some heavier weighted, depending on the type of water that you're fishing. Now, I, I'm using a black six aught thread. I'm gonna put it back on. And this is a very, very simple uh, fly, but one of the two or three single most effective nymphs that I ever used. I used to do a lot of nymph fishing. I don't much anymore, but this one was a real dandy. And it was actually patterned after a fly called the mink thing uh, that was uh, published back in the 1970s in Fly Fisherman magazine. And it, it that, that fly simply consisted of some mink fur with all the guard hairs just stirred up and wrapped onto the to the uh, to the hook, leaving all the guard hair sticking up all over the place. And so I did that for a while, and I thought, well, you know, I kind of like this uh, uh, the concoction that I came up with. It took the place of this. And what I'm using here is uh, is a uh, uh, this stuff, which is a combination of about one fourth muskrat and about three quarters a fox squirrel. So the squirrel rat, and what it does, what I found is if you if you use the fox squirrel alone, it's just loaded with guard hairs, uh, a higher percentage of guard hairs than, than the muskrat has. So if you use that by itself, uh, it sometimes can be a little difficult to dub. So if you throw something else in with a little bit more fur in it, like I did with the muskrat, which also has a, its own guard hairs, it becomes more manageable as a dubbing fur. So I did that and it turned out, you're gonna see the, what it looks like now when we, when we put it on and we're gonna use a twist dubbing method and the guard hairs are gonna pop out all over the place just like the old mink thing did. And what it really reminded me of when I first started doing this fly, and I thought it just struck me all of a sudden, <laughs> this looks like a kind of a, uh, a uh, fur bodied uh, 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 woolly worm. Uh, and because it, it's, it's a very simple fly, you can put a tail on it if you want, I never put a tail on it, but what I've put on here is a very loose, loosely put on a pretty good sized noodle of that dubbing mixture that I showed you. And then we're going to throw on a dubbing loop the way I do it. I don't use any tools for that, but I just do this and make the loop. 
and do this all the way back. And you want, I, I, I bring this one back down even into the bend a bit and then bring the thread back. And hopefully we've got enough fur on there to do this. It takes It takes quite a bit because you're gonna twist it like this. I'm gonna twist it and those guard hairs are gonna to start to pop out and make a pretty buggy looking fly. And you can go over it and, and pick those out afterwards as well. Anyways, from there, we once we got that twisted up, we simply begin to wrap it on like this. Like I said, an extraordinarily simple fly. And, and as we're doing this, just a little bit of, of uh, how I used to fish it when I was fishing it a lot, the most effective thing you can see guard here is starting to pop out along the uh, along the, the length of the body here. And up to here, there they go, more of them, more of them, more of them. Okay, so I had just enough on there. So we'll tie that off there. Oops, and do a little whip finish there. If you want to put head cement on there to hold it in place, that's your option, of course. And you can go back over this and rough it up and pick more of those out. But you can see what happens when you do that. You've got guard hairs popping up and like this. And that's about it. When you're all done, you see those. The, you see the guard hairs pop out. Now, as to fishing this, it's a like I said, it's a simple fly. Obviously, it doesn't take long to tie. What I found the most effective way to fish it, where I really caught a lot of fish, was this fly is just designed to fish short casts upstream into riffles, uh, short runs, and especially into pocket water. It was deadly doing that. Um, I've adopted the lazy man's fishing nowadays in my older years of simply 99% of the time dry fly fishing. Uh, this takes a little bit of concentration, <laughs> but highly effective. And this was just a, just a simple, but a really, really excellent fish taker. I hope you give it a try and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And, and if you do, so our next fly, uh, our next session is going to be a tilt wing March Brown, my own pattern that I found highly effective over the years. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy this one.